Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? It's uh, Wednesday in the middle of the summer here in Minnesota, August 11th, I believe it is, 2021. Uh, we did a recap on the tone bullets I've been collecting on my last episode in preparation for my receiving of this one. And let me tell you, this might be the record of the year. All these reissues and record store days and all the nonsense and alternate takes and live box sets with 10 records. This is quality stuff. This, it's unbelievable Blue Note sat on this session from 59. When the lineup alone with Donald Byrd, Hank Bobley, Sonny Clark, Paul Chambers, and Art Blakey, it's jazz royalty. It's not some mishmash recording. It's not some strewn together lineup. This is the best of the best, being led by one of the most intense players in the Blue Knot hard bop scene, the great Sonny Clark. Those of you familiar with the channel know how big a fan I am of Sonny Clark. He always produces an aggressive, filled with tension releasing, frustration fighting, uh, emotional outpouring, and he leads his men into battle with him. He's very much the leader of any session he's on. So I've been excited about this release for months, and I got it the other day. I listened to it three times now, and let me tell you, it's outstanding. It just cooks. And the first thing I really want to mention on this record is Donald Byrd. I don't know if I've ever heard Donald Byrd so fiery, so precise. Uh, he's usually a little slicker, a little bit more groove, R&B, and he's very aggressive, he's very tight, he's very, like I said, fiery is the best word for it. And of course, Mobley's always the chameleon. Mobley's always the guy that's going to, to some degree, meld his sound and tone to who he's playing with. And here he's playing a fairly bright, edged out tone with some, uh, some edges of desperation. And Mobley's a cool cat, Mobley's more laid back and chill. Uh, and yet, uh, there's sessions where you get Mobley really displaying that aggression. Uh, gatefold, of course. And what you, what you get with some of these tone poets is that crack seam there from the big gatefold with the, the heavy press vinyl. But I'm not the guy that's going to sit here and complain about it. It's a $25 record. Who cares? You know, people are so... Oof. I don't get it. Why are you complaining so much about a little crack in the seam? I mean, read the book. Enjoy. Don't worry about the binding so much. Uh, Mobley, Bird, Chambers, and Blakey. What a lineup. And of course, there's the great Sonny Clark. The great photographs of uh, Frank Wolf always illuminate and illustrate the tone poets wonderfully and most of the Blue Note canon, for that matter. Uh, it says Reed Miles did the cover art as well. So perhaps this cover was put in place back in the day, even though it was never given a sequence issue number or ever released. And I think it did come out eventually in Japan in the 80s, perhaps. I read it the other day, but uh, it has a CD issue in like 2000 as well. But for the most part, this is the first American reissue on this on vinyl. And it's just outstanding stuff. Junka just cooks. Uh, blues, blues, beautiful minor meeting. It's another recording of that, and this is fantastic. Royal Flush, a Donald Bird track, is outstanding. Uh, some Clark bars, and then My Conception. It's really one of the gold standards of not only the Tone Polar reissue series, but of what Blue Note sounds like. This is it. There's Clark. It's, uh, I've, I've been really impressed by it. And of all the tone poets I've heard, but they're all fantastic. This might be my favorite to date. Again, I'm a Clark guy, I'm a hard bop guy. I love that expression, that emoting of the times. You know, going through what's that experience and, and putting it into your horn and telling the world about how you feel. I'm so in tune with that because I, I, I relate to the honesty. I relate to the desperation and uh, it's my situation that drives my sincerity. I don't got time to mess around here. We're, this is serious stuff. I love how the cover is so beautiful that it reflects its background like that. It's uh, 
well done, guys. And of course, as much credit as you got to give to Kevin Gray and the guys at Tone Poet, it's really Alfred and Frank and Van Gelder and the Blue Note artists that are responsible for this magic. And it's really a tour de force. <clears throat> it's something that it's hard to believe that Blue Note didn't put it out. And I think Clark's drug problem might have been part of why. You know, and I don't think his record sold particularly well. But again, no Blue Note record sold really well in the comparison to a major label. It's a real relative thing compared to Jimmy Smith to a Sonny Clark record. But uh, Clark's legacy, I think, is really being reestablished today. A lot of the tone poets that have come out have been stuff with Sonny Clark leading the session. Even if he's not the leader, he's a preeminent force. And piano players usually are going to be a dominant force in any session in terms of helping arrange uh, song selection. The piano players are often very instrumental in all those aspects of what a record's gonna sound and look like. And Sonny Clark has the added dimension <clears throat> of being a psychological, emotional, political, cultural, spiritual warrior. He's fighting for a lot of things. And again, Donald Byrd right there. There's a few times where I'm like, is that Lee Morgan? There's such an aggression and a, a tension and a um, vitriol that Bird's usually a little bit more laid back. And he's just on edge right now. I'd be curious to know what was going on in Donald Bird's life this day, this week. Was his wife being a pain in the butt? Was his, did his father, father pass? Who knows? I don't know. You know, uh, it's not always easy to find that information. But Bird seems like he's got something on his mind that's really driving him and fueling him. And he kind of actually outshines Mobley a little bit, which I would rarely say. But every time I went like this listening to it, it was always Bird who grabbed my attention. Grabbed me by the throat. I was like, ah! He got me numerous times. And every listen, I'm like, Donald Bird, there you go again. And again, the first listen, I ate three times. I'm like, who's that on the trumpet? You know what I mean? I thought it was Lee Morgan numerous times. Because Morgan's a very aggressive player. And Bird's less so. But he could still illustrate that sound, obviously. And he comes with a lot of force, fire, and fury. This is a nice little laid back track here. Blue's blue. It's the blue shuffle. Now listen to this. Like, I would have to be like, is that Freddie Hubbard? Is that Clifford Brown? He plays a very uh, fluid, yet tense and aggressive sound. And some of the guys, when they get very tense and aggressive, they become, uh, they lose some of the shape and form of the notes. Uh, the rhythm, the line, the melodic lines move less in flow and become a little blockier and choppier because of the aggression. And yet he's moving so smooth and fluid through this viscous tension and really cutting and dicing and splicing. Bird really impresses me on this record. And of course, I think Clark is a big impetus for that. Clark's the kind of guy who I think would shove a hairpin in your buttocks before you played just to kick you in the ass a little bit. Or Blakey too. Blakey's the kind of guy who's gonna be like, nah, 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 more. I want more from you guys. There goes Mobley. And again, Mobley's A little creamier, a little softer. Mobley's never the edgy of a Coltrane or some of the great tenor players out there. He was called the middleweight tenor player for a reason, the middle heavyweight. He's just, uh, he's a cool cat. And yet he can get really intense when the setting allows for him to. But it's really Bird for me that steals this show. He's just outstanding from stem to stern. What a great record. Kudos to Tone Poet. You need to buy this one. And a lot of the Tone Poets that are regular sequence blue notes are all worth getting. And some of the stuff that's the filling in between the crack sessions that I've been buying, maybe you don't need to buy Passing Shifts. Maybe you don't need to buy some of those records right away. For me, they're valuable because it's all I didn't have. But this is something you should get right away. This is 1500 probably 1585 1590 in that area somewhere 
1959 when that's that sequence was being issued so it's in the heart of the greatest stretch of blue note recordings that define the blue note sound and it's not to say the blue note uh library isn't great well into the 4000 sequence it is however the blue note sound has kind of morphed and changed by then and it's different things happening from the avant-garde to the rhythm and blues to soul jazz so there's just there's different developments in the blue note sound and the blue note sound is not as quantifiable 1961 62 65 66 you don't know what to expect on a blue note record quite the same way as you do in 57 58 59 you know what you're gonna get from a blue note record then for the most part it's gonna kick you in the balls it's going to smack you in the face and be speaking about social awareness and if you don't hear it you're not thinking you're not feeling you're not listening they're very aggressive records 1540 through 1595 it's creme de la creme if you want social justice and if you want music that has purpose and meaning that's some powerful stuff and this is from that era so the expectation that it should sound and feel like that makes perfect sense and know that that whole era coincides largely with the great Sonny Clark's era at Blue Note. It's not a coincidence this guy was a strong motivator of mind of soul of power of ability and you had Blakey too that has always been known as a guy that would push his players hard it's no surprise that you have Chambers Blakey and Sonny Clark pushing and driving these tracks and Donald Byrd sounds as good as he's ever sounded it's not a surprise that's what Blakey does that's what Sonny Clark does and again Mobley's also fantastic he just doesn't grab my attention on this record quite the same way that Bird did repeatedly. And like I said, Bird made me stick at my eyebrow and go, who was that? At least five times on this album. So great stuff. I'm gonna show you one other thing real quick, then we'll move on. A couple things I wanna show you real quick uh, for my been surgery for for a long time category. Uh, I finally got from South Africa of all places, Stablemates. And it's a version of this that's not even on Discogs. The seller didn't know what he had. He had a price based off what was on Discogs, but this one's not listed at Discogs presently. I think it's German. I'm not positive. Savoy Stablemates, Crossroads Music Company, Flanamar, Planamar Music, GMG. I'm not really sure. It's European, I can tell by the jacket, the flimsy, the way it's pasted together. It's a European pressing, but it's a record I have not been able to win. I was looking for it for the longest time. This completes my first 160 Savoy 12-inch LPs in the 12,000 sequence. So it was something I really wanted to fill in. And I got this title, probably paid a little more than I should have, but the guy didn't know better, and he openly admitted he didn't know. And we came to an agreement on it. I probably still paid too much. But again, it's a great cover, and it's a record I've been looking for for years. I used to see it all the time for 20, 30 bucks, and now you can't find it at auction. It goes for 200 every time. So finally got Stable Mates. Pretty excited about that. And then two interesting records here. Another record I've been looking for for about six months, and I could never find one except for one that was in Spain. The price was a little high on. I think it was 150 euro, and I finally made the guy an offer on it. I think I offered him half of that, 75 American dollars, American, and he took it. And he was happy to sell it to me. Uh, you see, he was happy to say that I went to a good home. Uh, Melba Liston and her bones. Uh, Melba Liston's one of the great trombone players. She's kind of a great arranger in the period. It doesn't get a lot of work as a leader. She's had the respect of all the men in the business. She was a bad girl. Uh, Melba could play her butt off and in so showing, she brings in the best trombone players in the world to record this record with her. Sans, J.J. Johnson, and Curtis Fuller, every other great on the trombone is on this record. You've got Jimmy Cleveland, who virtuosity-wise is the best of the best. Al Gray, who's got more tricks, gimmicks, sounds, and effects up his sleeve than any guy in the trombone business. Slide Hampton, who has a wonderful sound and delivery. Benny Green, who's the soulful sound of the trombone. Uh, Benny Powell, who swings as hard as anybody with the Basie crew. And then Frank Rehack, 
who's another fantastic bone player. And then the rhythm section is also fantastic on this. I'm going to have to open this up. I don't remember. Uh, the rhythm section consists of Kenny Burrell, George Joyner, Charlie Persip. I think there's also George Tucker and Frank Dunlop on a couple tracks. Uh, two, two different sessions. Uh, all six trombone players are with her at the same time. She brings in three for one session, three for the other session. And if you want to hear the viscosity, the sound of what a trombone is, how versatile a horn it is, it can be this creamy, melodic, smooth sound. It can be this blurting uh, sound of an ass farting. Uh, there's some stuff on here by the great Al Gray that'll melt your mind. Uh, Jimmy Cleveland, some of his breaks are so uh, punctuated and, and just so incredibly agile. Cleveland's nuts. And Melba's hanging with all of these cats. Not just hanging, but excelling. And she's arranging the stuff as well. So Melba, and I looked for this record a long time. This completes my Metro Jazz sequence, which is only 15 records. Some of them are pretty tough to come by the Gigi Grice, some of the Rollins. This one especially was tough to find. Uh, happy to finish that sequence off. It's a great little sub-imprint of the MGM music family. And they made these 15 jazz records that are the best of their jazz canon. And the, the stuff on Metro Jazz is all noteworthy and worthy of owning if and when you see it. Last, I want to talk about Vi Red. She played with Basie for a while. She's an alto player, another fiery player, another gal playing a horn. And the gals in jazz are mostly singers. And then they're piano players. The horn players are fewer and further between. But these are two of the best. And uh, this is also a great session. Uh, she sings on some of it, if I recall. It's been a week or so since I listened to this. Uh, Roy Ayers at a young age is playing the vibes. Leroy Vinegar, the great Russ Freeman's on the piano. Herb Ellis is on the guitar. Bob Whitlock's on the bass. Kansas Lawrence is on the trumpet. And I gotta think who that would be, Kansas Lawrence. Would that be uh, from Basie's group or Ellington's group? Uh, Lawrence Brown? I gotta, I gotta think on that one. I gotta be honest, Kansas Lawrence? I'm not sure. Jean-Michel? Sebastian? Tell me. You probably know who that is. Uh, Reister Beethoven. Uh, awesome record, though. On the United Artists as well. Uh, another great little label, uh, film industry label. It does some great jazz records, and this is one of note. So, three records I've been looking for for a while, and I finally added them to my collection. And the Sonny Clark, you should buy it. Of all the tone poets I've heard, to me, that's the most essential one so far. It's just fantastic. Y'all have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Support the Jazz Shepherd channel if you can with Patreon or buying some Jazz Shepherd merchandise. It's always appreciated and it's helping us get the coffee shop established. We've met a few thresholds here with building inspectors and with the banks. So things look like they're going forward. Keep us in your thoughts and prayers as we go forward. Let's hope this pandemic comes to an end and doesn't put another stoppage on anything. Y'all be safe and be blessed. Love y'all. Peace.